Hi Bruce from Safari and in the last video we talked about alternator control and um, one of the questions we've had back from people since we gave the last uh, video was can you run your lithium battery directly off the alternator with no control at all? Just put the lithium battery there and have the alternator going straight into the lithium battery. Well I think that's like having a suicide bomber in a kindergarten. Uh, it's just prone with tears in the end and just a disaster. In the mainstream it may work some of the time but will not work all the time. And in the meantime, you'll significantly chemically age the lithium batteries. It's just a disaster. So charging control is vitally important. It is more important than the discharge with lithium. And that's what we're about here at Safari. So we had the old motor control before. Now we've got the next level up, and that is our new Scotty product that you're seeing here. And what Scotty here does is it does, it's a DC to DC converter and an alternator controller all wrapped up in one package. But it transfers the power at up to 3000 watts. So 250 amps coming out of this alternator here, made in Brisbane, for a Land Cruiser 279 to suit that. Um, it, it's rated at 250 amps of output, and we can take all the 250 amps out of that through this 70 mil squared cable here that we've got going in. This is sitting in the engine bay close to it, so it's a short cable run. We can take the power out of here and then we can move it up to either 24 volts, 36 volts or 48 volts and store it in a large lithium uh, battery array, a battery bank uh, for use for taking 240 volt power out of. Uh, what it does though is it controls this alternator. And so I'll just briefly touch on the uh, Euro 6 and the new compliance standards coming with alternators and energy management and why this is so different and important to people that want to uh, have their vehicle comply with the standard. In Australia at Euro 5 now, um, Euro 6 is the next level. Euro 6 is 55% less emissions than Euro 5 and that's the direction we're heading in. So what happens with a smart alternator, it's really a smart ECU, it's the whole vehicle, it's not the alternator per se, but what a smart vehicle does is that when you take your foot off the accelerator um, or touch the brake, um, either way, the alternator then increases the voltage output. So brands like Mercedes go up to 15.4, 15.6 volts, and they try to put as much power as they can, as much energy, into the battery, into the start battery as they can in a short period of time. And the reason why they do that is then when you take off at the lights or you're just idling along, it uses the power out of the battery, the energy out of the battery directly, and turns the alternator off. So the alternator has been turned on and off by the ECU and the vehicle, depending on what the energy management strategy is to get a better fuel consumption for the vehicle. Uh, so it can put out up to 3,000 watts. And that number is important because Scotty here will take the 3,000 watts. So to have a compliant DC to DC on a vehicle with a Euro 6 engine, um, you can't use a regular DC to DC, or if you do, you have to have a setting in there that only comes on when it's in regen mode and does not come on the rest of the time. So that means the DC to DC has to be driven by the ECU, by the CAN bus in the vehicle, to come on and off. And most of them can't do that. Uh, but this unit here can. We can read that and we can only deliver the power when you're on road so that when it's in regen mode or you're coasting, we'll pull the power out very, very quickly to charge the lithium battery. Now when you're off-road and you're not so concerned about the compliance to the Euro 6 standard, flick a switch, go into off-road mode, and then this will operate as a high-performing DC to DC. And what it does is it takes the power out of here by just taking the 12 volt power out of here at a set point that we set in here and transfer it up to, as I said, 24, 36 or 48 volts. It's actually electrically very, very simple. Where the complexity is in this is the fact that we hunt to find what is the best set point, what's the best set point for it in its normal operation, what's the best set point when it's in regenerative mode so that we can pull more power out of it. And it's a bit like an MPPT controller in solar. It's like that, but it's an MPPA for alternator uh, that's occurring in the vehicle. And we follow the pattern on that together with wake speed offshore, Al and the team over there, uh, we have jointly filed a patent on how we can uh, take that out of it. Now, at the core of this is a bi-directional 3000 watt planar transformer designed for the electric vehicle industry. So it's fitted to some very famous brands that I can't mention because of an NDA, 
but very famous brands have fitted electric vehicles so that it can operate between 12 volt and 48 volt, which is the standard for all mild hybrids. And what we've done is taken an electric vehicle product, put it in here, added a communication controller, an alternator controller, and some CAN bus software in here, and applied it into the alternator control market. So this alternator need not be a vehicle alternator. It could also be two outboard engines. And if those outboard engines are producing power, we can take that power out at 12 volts. It can be quite dirty, unclean, it doesn't matter. It can be two alternators joined together, that's fine. We can take it in here and we then smooth all that out and we can then charge a 36 volt, say an encoder on the front of the, on the, front of the boat. Uh, we can then power up a 36 volt bank directly and uh, operate it, charge it that way while you're operating the outboard. Then when you come home, you just clip a 240 volt charger on the 12 volt pin here and charge it the normal way. You don't need a 36 volt charger. That's built into, into Scotty. So the, the best part is yet to come. The best part is this is bi-directional. Within 25 milliseconds, it will switch the power from one direction to the other. So with these two devices here, you can run your winch 250 amps here, 250 amps from Scotty coming in. You can run 500 amps absolutely continuously. You don't need to have the stop start for the battery to recover. It just runs flat out. And in the boat application, you don't need a 12 volt house battery. You take the 12 volt pin here and that will supply all the power for your instrumentation, refrigeration, electric winches if you're running electric winches on your fishing rods. Uh, it will run all that off the 12 volt pin, but the battery supply is off the 36 volt battery bank running the encoder. So you just have to put one lithium battery bank in uh, admittedly two starter, two starter batteries and you've got two outboard alternators on it. It is just sensational. In a catamaran scenario, two say Volvo D270s, don't have to be that big, we can put uh, alternators on either of those and that will then take the power off, uh, you're going to have two of these or one, and that will be enough power to quickly regenerate your battery system. Now why is this power so important? And it's important because you can have smaller lithium batteries, because you're going to be regenerating faster. So this will regenerate a 400 amp hour uh, lithium battery in just over an hour and a half totally. So from 20% level until say 80, 90% level, get most of the power into the lithium. Uh, this is putting it in at, at 250 amps. So in an hour and a half, you've got 375 amps going in to a 400 amp hour lithium battery more than enough and that speed of doing it means you don't need so much solar anymore if at all in fact if you're a, a tradesman a tradie uh, then you wouldn't need it at all because you're using your vehicle every day your fridge your batteries are going to be full all the time the other thing we can do with this is that you can idle your engine and pull the power out and run anything on site and this is better than two kilowatt uh, generator so this produces more power than a honda eu2i and look at the size of it. It's 96% efficient. A Honda EU2i is probably down in the 50, 60% range. Uh, a regular DC to DC, the transformer type, is in the range of about 85 to 90%. This is 96%, so it produces very little heat. We've added the heat sink on here in case this is going onto a timber backing board, so this totally dissipates any heat that's uh, generated. It's really not, not uh, required. Um, it's just over two kilos, there's the height of it there, you can see our branding on the top there. And on the bottom here, we've got two choices of connections. We've either got these glands that come in, and there's an IP67 seal behind here, built into this bottom uh, plate here. Or you can go to the amphenol connectors here that I've got, I've just got these loosely in here at the moment. So these amphenol connectors that are in here have got the helicoil on it, and they just push in and they're IP67. So these here, uh, this is good for 100 amps, 180 amps, and 250 amps. And that connector plate goes in, they lock onto the pins, and then we seal uh, those into position. I think for most people though, the glands that you see here will be sufficient. Now this case, which is fairly intricately designed, sitting on top of the planar transformer, the buck boost, was designed by my partner Fiona. She just did a remarkable job. So she's got 
the unit with the seals all the way around here so that it's totally waterproof um, and the bolt through here on the top plate also goes through the uh, backing plate here, the 8mm backing plate on the unit. It's just a uh, fantastic result. So uh, have a look on our website, you'll see some schematics on how we do it. Uh, this is available for sale globally around the world. Anyone, any, any country can use this. It's not specific to Australia. Uh, the base uh, by die here the, is uh, developed in the USA and then we've assembled it with the other components. Um, it's just a brand new product and a brand new market. How good is that? Thank you.